Welcome to the final power armor customization video in Fallout 4 featuring the XL1 armor. Once we take a look at it, we will be doing an overall comparison of all 5 armors and then take a look at the special paint jobs that the game offers. This is the standard design that is pretty much the same as the previous armors, lots of rust and it appears very dated despite its futuristic shape. The upper area of the armor reminds of an alien bug that has a big shell across its back. The models of this armor aren't actually called models, they're labeled MK1 to 6. The full word is Mark, that represents the strength of the armor. All of the following materials combined with the Mark 1 model will result with this color. Changing the model to any other Mark will make the armor look like this, a pretty decent silver color with a bit of rust. It looks much better than the very rusty color, but it still looks a bit dated. For an armor that is shaped like this, any color is good though. The military paint looks great, it is the cleanest standard paint available, so if you dislike rust, you will want to go with this one. I like the fact that there is no white present anywhere on the armor. This one color design suits this armor very well. The vault tech paint is for the first time pretty cool, the lack of the yellow color makes this blue color look much nicer if you ask me. I like blue and I think that it goes really well with the color of the rust that is the same as the color of the helmet pipes. I would probably like the vault tech paints from the other armors if they didn't have the yellow parts. Probably. The X01 doesn't have the winterized coating, but it does have the institute paint that we will cover in another video. You probably noticed another two extra materials, the EMP shielding and the thermal coating. Both of these increase energy resistance and you already know that their visual design isn't special. The backstory of this armor dates back 7.6 thousand years ago when the gods of Petardia decided to create a mechanized suit that would look awesome and which would be very useful both in galactic combat and movement. After a brief consultation with Kevin Spacey, who spent a great deal of time on Capax, a widely known planet of advanced beings, they kidnapped a mirror-like creature from a distant planet and transformed it into a human-like mechanized suit. We will simply recreate the very first functional version of this mechanized suit. The gods were able to successfully attach the strongest Mark VI model of the helmet and the explosive shielding. The Mirrorlurk's shell helped adapt the helmet to this type of protection. The targeting HUD mod was also added, which highlighted living targets while wearing the suit. It is currently unknown how did they make this work right away, possibly magic or some shit. They spent a lot of time on the headlamp design, because they wanted this suit to be able to intimidate enemies just by looking at them. So what they did was put the red tactical headlamp and integrated it into the helmet's visor. This allowed the suit to not only light up the area in red, but also to turn its eyes in red. The torso was a problem because the mirror-like creatures have weak torsos, so giving the suit strong protection proved to be quite difficult, so this part only has the Mark II model. They weren't able to change the torso too much, but they managed to attach the EMP shielding to it, which increased the energy resistance a bit. They weren't able to do anything else other than add something onto the torso, and the jetpack was the ideal option. The arms have the Mark III model, they were able to produce better quality models, but it took a lot of time because the arms of the Mirrorlurk had claws that were used to improve the efficiency of the arms, rather than the outer stability of them. In order to make sure the efficiency was properly optimized, they had to use the vault tech paint, which was an experimental material that Kevin Spacey brought with him one day. To this day, the gods assume he used that material to masturbate with, but nothing has been proven. They used the blue material and were able to attach the Tesla braces that added energy damage to the fists. This was great success and they were very proud of their work. Until they started working on the legs. Turns out Mirrorlurk's legs were perfectly transformed into human legs and they instantly had the Mark VI model. Not only that, but the titanium plating was easy to implement as well. This increased the armor health quite a bit. As for the modifications, they had two available options at that time, the explosive vent and the kinetic servos. Obviously the explosive vent seemed like the correct choice, since the suit had the jetpack, so after jumping very high, it could slam into the ground and do a lot of damage. However, they took kinetic servos for the right leg and the vent for the left. This would increase the damage from the landing, while also making sure that the action point recharge was faster than the stock speed. Since the power armor functioned using galactic cores, we had to improvise and design this one for the human, power cores. Using the jetpack drains the power core, but luckily not much. It is not known was the galactic core infinite or replaceable, but knowing the gods, they probably made it infinite. The carry capacity of this armor is 310, the stock amount. As for the defenses, the damage resistance is 1680, the energy resistance is 1260, and the radiation resistance is the standard 1050. To build this ancient replica of the gods' first mechanized suit, 
You will need these materials. It won't be easy, but I trust in you, my friend. You can do it. Fighting with this beast is very effective. Three regular hits kill a legendary raider. I kept hitting the raiders in the face, I didn't even need to use the charged attack. They all dropped like flies. Smashing into the ground next to the raiders did crazy damage, and I was able to murder them with one hit. I had no idea it would be this effective, especially on legendary raiders. The murder continued and they slowly did some damage, wave by wave. I got to wave 7 and they brought the health down to 5%. As I smashed the final raider, I actually leveled up, which brought all of my health back. This annoyed me quite a bit, but the health was pretty much non-existent, so we can say that this armor managed to live through 7 full waves of legendary raiders. I continued the waves with full health, just for fun. And with the damaged armor, the 8th wave did tremendous damage, health was down to less than 30%. During wave 9, I panicked and tried to use vats, but as I failed to do the simplest thing in the game, they murdered me. Glorious armor designed by the gods to battle for eternity has been recreated and I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching and let me know, do you like these stupid ass stories that I create while doing the customization? I figured it would make it more interesting and it's fun to do. I have been Petard, your glorious lord, and may the blessings of Petardia eternally touch your butt. In order to make sure the efficiency was properly optimized, they hate... They hate, they hate, just to go and they hate, they hate.